Hello again, and good morning to you. Today's footage is uh, trying to get everything cleaned up a little bit now that the speaker box construction is done. And then uh, <coughs> working on the layout and getting the hardware installed into the the uh, equipment box. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do just to try and help improve the feel of the speakers, I guess, I don't know. Um, in the old version, that the I never sanded anything. Um, and I wanted to just make sure that, I don't know, I guess I thought the, the glue would have a little bit better bonding ability if the surface was a little bit more smooth. Um, get rid of some of the, some of the major issues with the plywood, because, you know, plywood nowadays is not what it once was. Um, Particularly on the, the corners is what I'm trying to make sure there's, you know, smooth transitions. Um, the I've used a few different carpets for speakers over the years, and the problem is I don't build them enough to warrant buying a major supply. Um, like, I'd love to just buy a giant roll and have it sitting somewhere ready to go, but that's a pretty heavy cost. Um, so by the time I get around to building a set of speakers again, it seems like the manufacturers change what they're doing. And I've had some thin carpets that showed every single little crack and crevice in the plywood. Um, obviously, I don't like those. <laughs> um, I've had some thicker carpets that were too thick and actually difficult to work to to wrap around the the speaker. Um, I've found that the uh, automotive style carpet actually works the best. Uh, this variety that I bought from uh, Home Depot actually worked out really well. It's a little bit thicker than the stuff I've used in the past, um, which is interesting because I've actually bought some. So there's there's a company called Pen Elcom that like that's all they do is make hardware for speakers and whatnot. Um, it's just a I don't know, they have a huge catalog, and I've never actually sat down to look through the entire thing, but most of the parts that I end up uh, using are from Penelcom. And they're, they're good quality parts. Um, this time I uh, I didn't realize it, but I did not order Penelcom grills, and I actually kind of regret that, uh, the, the grills that I ended up getting they just feel flimsy to me. Um, they're pretty weak, and the the gasket around the outside of it is is just a really, really flimsy, cheap plastic. So, um, you get what you pay for with the Pen Elcom, um, but that but that's okay. So right here, this is what I was telling you about. There's there's like this. There's a little bit of a lip because of that uh, the size discrepancy in the thickness. Um, and I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not that big a deal, and it's just easier to cut it the size that I want, and then just deal with that you know it's not hard to just use a router flush trim bit to to just zip along that edge but um, I don't know maybe next time I'll actually take the time to change my measurements by that sixteenth of an inch or whatever it is I think the biggest 
I don't know, the biggest reason to do the sanding would just be to um, prevent slivers as I'm moving the boxes around and whatnot, but that's not that big a deal because, you know, I only move them like <laughs> once or twice before they actually get carpeted. <laughs> they pretty much are getting stacked over here and then once that's done I can clean the rest of that area and uh, vacuum it, blow all the dust out, and it's ready to start carpeting. So uh, that's always a good point, a good time, and it's, you know, always a frustrating time because the fumes can get pretty, pretty interesting. We'll put it that way. <laughs> Surprisingly, um, I don't know. I, I have uh, chronic bronchitis, and it, it's just my personal result from smoking when I was younger. Um, so at, anytime I get exposed to uh, a huge, wide variety of chemicals, I end up getting a bout of bronchitis. Um, it, it's it's pretty ridiculous. Um, it's really annoying, and it, and lately, ever ever since uh, COVID, uh, any time I get any kind of cold or flu, I now get a severe, you know, three week bout of bronchitis that I have to fight through. Um, so I'm I'm really careful about what chemicals I'm around to the point where like we only use a small handful of chemicals in our in our house and uh, Emily has to suffer through um, <laughs> uh, being a little bit restricted in her personal care products uh, or at least when when she uses them um, because like a lot of you know hairsprays and things I, I can't breathe there's there's a lot of lotions that have a chemical in them and I, I don't know how I would go about figuring out what chemical that is. I just know there's lotions that if I if I smell them and inhale that chemical, then I end up in a major coughing fit um, and to the point where I, I can't breathe. And I actually that's been a that's been a a, a sensitive point and one of the best reasons to work from home is because I don't have to deal with other people. And I don't have to deal with other people's, you know, lotions and perfumes and things. Um, I had, uh, when I worked in, in, in an office in Logan, there was a, we'll just say a young lady who liked her lotions. And I kid you not, she would put lotion on every 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes tops. Like, she literally was just constantly putting lotion on. And I didn't ever care about it until they put my desk next to hers and said, okay, here's the seating arrangement, here you go. And she pulled out this little bottle of lotion one day and started rubbing it on, and I could not breathe. Like, I had to literally leave the room um, for whatever it was. And that sparked a, a huge issue, like... I simply asked if she would not use that lotion. I was very kind, very polite, and I even had my team lead involved because I knew that it was going to be an issue. And sure enough, she blew up and she went all off the handle about how she should be able to use whatever scent she wants and just because I don't like the smell of something. And, and she never did grasp that it wasn't a matter of whether or not I liked the smell of something, it was a matter of whether or not I could breathe. Um, so it was to the point where every time I, I just told the, the team lead, I said, fine, every, every time she puts this on, I will leave. I will not sit at my desk. Um, she ended up quitting not too long after that. Unrelated reasoning, but, um, yeah, it, it's, 
it was a very entitled i guess the 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 modern term now would be that she was very karen about it which i i don't really like because i actually know two karens and they're both awesome one of them is my aunt and one of them is my best friend's mom and i think it's, i don't know that's just a that's just a stupid like that is a as as insulting of a term as you know any racist term um that's anyway but she she definitely was the type of person that would anytime she'd get remotely upset she would drastically dramatize and over overreact and blow things way out of proportion but uh anyway the point was that um Pinesol is oddly uh, one of the one of the few cleaning chemicals that doesn't cause me to react, um, and st really strangely, contact cement, uh, the actual DAP contact cement, DAP brand contact cement, does not make me go into a breathing fit. Um, I had to quit painting with oil paints because the the smell of several of the different oil paints um, would cause problems I that was that was where I actually learned about the fact that I had chronic bronchitis was I was as an EMT uh, the instructors at our EMT class had the idea that they wanted the classes to each decorate a uh, a ceiling tile and then they would put that back up and then all the future classes would get to see all these different you know tiles and uh we had our our class they they were asking who could do stuff and whatnot and i showed them some stuff that i had painted in in high school and whatnot and they and they thought hey all right you're hired you're the you're the one to do this so i took this big two foot by four foot ceiling tile home and we we had discussed what to do and how to how to go about it and designed an image and I started working on it and painting it and um, I wasn't even halfway done and I didn't realize it but I just had started to get sick and I was coughing all the time and I was out one day doing other stuff and my lungs were feeling okay and I went down into my bedroom and started to paint and within seconds was just having a difficult time breathing coughing hacking stuff up and i left and i went outside for a while and it got better and i went back down into my bedroom and just couldn't breathe again so i i finished that painting and that was the last time i have done any oil painting which um it's kind of is is a is a disappointment i'm actually decent at it i mean i'm I don't know that I'm, I'd say I'm, you know, I'm no Bob Ross or anything, but I would, you know, paint stuff. And like I've, I painted a portrait of the, of a girlfriend that I had in high school and myself, uh, from one of our pictures, from one of our dance pictures. And, you know, you didn't even have to like think twice about it. You, you could tell right away, uh, who it was it was it, it was pretty good um that's a that's a hobby that i i miss doing uh and i might someday when you know all of our buildings are done and i'm not rushing to try and get stuff developed uh i might design a well not mine I'll, I'll design a specifically well ventilated room for emily uh, but i might combine that with a really good form of respirator shield something or other so that i can uh, try my hand at painting again because that's definitely something that's definitely a talent and art outlet that i i miss um, but stained glass has has actually been uh, a lot of fun to pick up and kind of fills the same same niche uh, sort of that's uh, 
when, when we get done with this wedding, that'll be one of the things that we will work on doing is putting windows into this uh, structure so that we get more light and I hopefully won't have to use the uh, battery cameras or the, me, the uh, battery lights but uh, the if we'll, I'm, I'm probably gonna put some temporary windows in and then when I get some ash milled and dried, uh, then I'm going to redo the windows so that I have a triple pane window. And we'll put some stained glass. Uh, I don't know how much color it'll be because we do want to actually see out the windows, but I can do like just clear glass um, as a you know, for the for the stained glass pieces, so it still creates a fun, unique pattern and whatnot. Um, but that'll be, you know, that'll be down the road. So at this point, the thought process here is that uh, I need to get the hardware into the lid of the equipment box, <clears throat> and this is where. It'll actually live, and it's going to stay, most of it will stay connected. And I just have to flip this over, you know, pull a few wires out, flip it over, and then uh, then I can, you know, plug in those particular devices and not have to worry about setting everything up every single time. Uh, this type of stuff is a, is a huge time saver. Uh, being able to, to do things that I don't have to set up every time. So there will be a power strip in here. There's going to be a USB hub. <clears throat> Obviously the the three uh, DMX transmitters, the two DMX converters. Um, and for now I'm just using some double-sided tape to kind of lock everything in place. Uh, or not lock it in place, but to, to hold it in place. And eventually I'll take some uh, plumber strapping and run a couple of straps across. And that'll, that'll pretty much lock it in place. So the at that point, the double-sided tape will basically just hold it from sliding around. Uh, and the plumber strapping will actually hold everything down so I'm trying to make everything as compact as possible. Um, I'm, I am a little bit concerned that there are several different things in here that are going to create um, a little bit of a potential for, for heat. So I might have to uh, add a, a you know, couple of USB powered like computer fans or something, just to make sure there's airflow while uh, while we're doing events and don't have to worry about that. But we'll see. Um, we'll see how how warm things get. I mean, the only thing that really generates any any heat is the power supply for the laptop. Uh, but that does. That can generate an awful lot of heat, so that might generate enough heat to affect other things, uh, especially since heat rises. Hmm. I just had that thought. I might need to drill some some kind of vent holes. That's going to require some additional thought. <clears throat> Most of this I'd already figured out. I think I mentioned that in previous videos. That's what this piece of cardboard here is. is sort of the map of how I want to delay things out. And so I'm just trying to uh, really just figure out the best way and how to handle the cord management um, to make sure that everything is, is ready and available. Well, I haven't tested it officially yet. Um, 
have plugged everything in just to make sure everything, you know, turns on and whatnot. Um, and so these are the USB cables for the different devices. And this is the uh, USB hub that I just put in there. So this hub is is kind of what allows me to do everything that I need to. Uh, laptops don't have that many USB ports anymore, and even even the uh, the big beast of a laptop that we have, it really only has uh, four USB ports. Uh, this uh, this hole I'm drilling is going to allow me to take the light control USB cords and just pass them through that back wall. And then they'll just sit, when this is upside down, they'll sit on the angled top. And then here on the other side I'm going to drill and then cut out a notch, actually. Um, so I'm just getting the jigsaw out here. But this will allow the power cord to come in, the laptop's power cord to come out, and then also the uh, the sound controller board USB cord will go out through that also. So the laptop will be in between the two halves of this box and they'll both be upside down. One one half will have the lighting controllers on it and the other half will have the music controller on it. <clears throat> I did um, create the layout and I didn't think about the, the fact that it's going to be upside down though. So technically uh, I, I built everything in here backwards. Uh, which isn't isn't really a big deal. Um, although every time I've ever you know DJed and stuff for some reason, it makes sense for me to have the light controls to the right of the music control, and this is actually going to be set backwards now because to make the chords work without having to completely change out the boxes and whatnot. Um, sound control will be on the right, the lights on the left, but that's where the uh, battery, the camera died for today, so thank you as always for watching. God bless you and yours, and stay safe and healthy out there. We'll catch you in the next video.